sense and nonsense. And so, you know, sometimes life's full of things that we get our senses around, and sometimes life throws us a curve, and you're like, that's, where did that come from? That's, that just seems like nonsense. And the truth is that God will do things in our life that's beyond our senses. It's beyond our understanding, but it's not nonsense. It's not nonsense. God always has a plan, doesn't he? He's always doing something. He's always working, and he includes us in this work. Sense and nonsense, we're talking about active, reactive, and proactive tonight. Active, reactive, and proactive. Um, To know how to engage the will of God. If you're a follower of Jesus Christ, you would think it would make, let's use the word, sense that you would want to know the will of God. I can't understand or imagine somebody wanting to follow Jesus but not want to know what his will is. To follow a leader, we know the game as kids, you know, follow the leader and you, you do what they do, you go where they go, you know, um, that's the desire. To not desire where Jesus is going uh, would be nonsense. So as a follower, as a disciple, it makes sense that I would want to know where Jesus is going. So how do I engage the will of God? Jesus had taken up some of his closest disciples up to the side of a mountain from the crowds where he had done great miracles, great ministry. They go up to the side of the mountain, and that is where he presents the Sermon on the Mount. That's what we've been talking about now for months, the Sermon on the Mount. And at this point, he takes his disciples and he begins to speak to them really about things that we could categorize as sense and nonsense, things that you've heard this and and I'm telling you this, this is what your thought is or uh, or how you think, Uh, but I'm going to give you some instruction. I want you to think deeper. I want you to go deeper with this. And if you were one of those disciples, you would probably be excited to hear that. You wouldn't have followed him up to the side of the mountain if you didn't want to know that. And the truth is, you're here because there's something you're wanting to gain from God. There's something you're wanting to understand. There's there's something you want to engage in the will of God for your life. And the truth is, and the good news is, is he's got a plan and a purpose and a will for every single one of us in this room. Isn't that cool? It includes you. His plan includes you. And it's specific sense and nonsense. See, in asking God for what you want, in seeking for what you miss or are missing out on regarding his will and knocking on the door uh, for what we believe maybe has been closed off to us or shut out from us. Uh, In doing that, Jesus gives some instruction, some understanding of how to respond to God. Because how many know this, that there's a proper response to God? And there's an improper response to God. But sometimes in our thinking, when we, when we go real human and not spiritual, uh, we, we can kind of have a response that's nonsense to the almighty creator of heaven and earth who has a plan for our life. But in the moment, at the time, it makes sense to us. But sometimes we look back and go, that was That was probably not the right response. Jesus is talking to his disciples, and he thinks this is important enough to bring up in his first message to them. He says this, Matthew 7, 7 through 8. He says, ask, and it will be given to you. He says, seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. Man, this is is an incredible invitation from, from Jesus Christ, the Son of God. He says, for everyone who asks receives, and the one who seeks finds, and to the one who knocks it will be opened. If you just take that scripture at face value, it's pretty powerful. You know, you need something, you ask. You need something, uh, you know what, seek seek this out, Uh, knock on the door, that's what he's telling them. If you're taking notes, you can write this down regarding sense, nonsense, uh, with God's will. Uh, write the word, well, you see the word on your bulletin. If you're taking notes, you can go to uh, the back of the bulletin or you can go to YouVersion, uh, the Bible app, and you can go to live events and uh, the notes are there. Regarding sense and nonsense with God's will first, this idea of active, active. Uh, it doesn't just happen. God's will for your life doesn't just happen. We have to be an active participant in the will of God for our life. You can't just go, God, I want your will and do nothing. It doesn't work that way. Think about that in a relationship 
that we would have with each other. We say, yes, I want to have a great, healthy, prospering relationship with this person, but we'll just let it happen. It doesn't work that way, right? Well, it doesn't work that way with the Lord either. We have to have active uh, participation in it. This creates an opportunity for a spiritual response. I think sometimes people miss this, I prayed and I prayed and I'm just, I'm just waiting for God to do what only God can do instead of going, okay, Lord, what would you have? God, how will you, uh, what, what, what part do I need to play in this? See, sometimes our senses get in the way and we want God to do, but we're not willing to do. We want God to go forth, but we're not willing to go forth. All of this by faith, we'll talk a little more about that. Active, it creates that opportunity for a spiritual response. Think about it, when someone, when someone wants something, there's different ways of going about getting it. Uh, we can ask, you know, we tell our kids, we're like, hey, uh, you know, if you want something, okay, what do you need to say? You need to ask, right? Use your words, we'll tell, we'll tell kids that. You know, as a parent, we get that, but sometimes with God, well, I just, God knows what I want. I mean, he knows, I didn't, I mean, I asked him 10 years ago, I, you know, I, I mean, he, he knows my heart, right? But if you've got something you need regarding God's will, ask. Well, if you want something, you can ask. Uh, you can take it. You could take things. I mean, in our senses, in our understanding, I mean, if I want something, I could take it, noticeably or unnoticeably. I remember years ago, Sierra, she, we'd make cookies or something, and they were sitting like on a warmer pan or something. I mean, they weren't hot, but it wasn't time to eat the cookies. And I mean, she's little. She's like 19, 20 years old. And, and so, no. And so, you know, she's like three or four. I mean, she could talk, and she understands right and wrong and, and all this. And so, uh, she goes to get a cookie. And she may even ask for a cookie, you know, can I have a cookie? I said, no, you can't have a cookie. And, uh, and not right now, let's spoil your dinner, lunch, whatever. And uh, she's looking at me, and she, she, her eyes are fixed on my eyes. And she's looking, and the cookies are right there, and she's looking straight at me, and she's like, like as long as our eyes are lasered in on each other, he cannot see my hand. And I go, what are you doing? No. You can't have that. And so, you know, she wants a cookie. She asked for a cookie. Yeah, she got an answer she didn't like, and, and yet, and I go, what are you doing? And the hand kind of stops and comes back, you know? And then she's like, maybe I need to go slower, more intentional, stare deep into dad's eyes, hypnotize him, you know, something. I mean, if there's something we want, sometimes, I mean, we could take it noticeably or unnoticeably, I mean, that could fall into the line of stealing. I want it, so I'll steal it. We can assume someone will or should give us this thing. You say, well, that doesn't make sense. Well, yeah, we do that. We're like, I would have thought, you would have thought that you should have given me that. I, I thought that you sensed that I liked that, and I figured you would have given me that. I mean, you know, that plays out in families all the time. You gave that to so-and-so. You knew I wanted that. I just assumed you were giving me that, right? Ask. You want something, ask. Doesn't always play out. We can wait around for it. How does this work with the things of God? Because if we did an interview, if we did a one-on-one -on -one with each other and we just interviewed, you've got some ideas and things you want from God. You've got some ideas and things you want from the will of God. Well, then it comes down to how are you going about getting that how does this work? Well, the, the will of God's really vast for our lives, but know this, it is specific to your life. He does have a plan for you. James gives us a little bit of uh, insight into this. James is a, is a book in the New Testament. It's more towards the back of the Bible. Uh, James, the brother of Jesus, he says, James 1, 5 through 8, he says, if any of you he gives us an understanding of lacking something and what you do uh, in the area of wisdom. He says, if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask God. Okay, so if, I, if it's understanding, if it's wisdom, if it's this direction, if, if I'm lacking it, then I'm to ask God. My sense may go, well, I'm gonna try to find a, a way, and I, you know, I prayed about it, but I'm just gonna, you know, he says, if you lack this, ask God, who gives generously to all without reproach. He says, and it will be given him. But let him ask in Faith, so here's a qualifier. I can ask God, but there's a qualifier here in faith. 
He says, with no doubting, for the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea that is driven and tossed by the wind. I'm going to come back to this, this scripture here in a second. To ask by faith. Again, I'm going to give a, a, an analogy here of a child and a parent. You know, it's nothing, nothing worse. I mean, there's, I'm sure there's worse things, but in context here that your child comes up and asks a question, and here's the thing, all of us have done this because all of us have been kids. I'm going to ask this, but I know what your answer is. You ever done that? You ever had that happen to you? I'm going to ask, well, I'm just asking, but I know what you're going to say, right? How many times do we do that with God? Lord, I'm, I, I really, I know this is probably not, but I just really want to, and you know my heart, and I don't mean anything bad by this, but I just want to do, I just want to be, I just want you to do, I just, but I, I know you probably, I mean, I know this is kind of contra, okay, that would be not just flippant, but that wouldn't be faith. See, our faith has to rest in God's will through God's word established through God's ways. I mean, that's, that's, that's where faith is built without doubting to go to the Lord and to ask for something is not to be flippant, is not to be without doubt of what you're doing, of what you're asking for. It cannot be in the human sense of, well, I know what you're gonna say, but I'm just gonna ask. Like, the ask is the thing that you're holding up with honor, and the whole concept is without honor. Uh, Jesus, or James says this, he says, but let him ask with faith, with no doubting, for the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea that is driven and tossed by the wind. Verse seven, for that person must not suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. So if your prayers are going, God, I'm praying, and I'm, and I'm, I'm sincere about this prayer, uh, but I know what you're probably going to say, that's double-minded. That's not praying according to to the will of God. And so you say, well, I prayed, and I've talked to many people. I've prayed and prayed and prayed. It just seems like that God is not and it just seems like he doesn't hear me, and it just seems like, because there may be a whole lot more at stake here, there may be a whole lot more going on here in how you're praying, how you're approaching, how you're asking. But we have to be active, but we've got to be active in a way that's godly, that's honoring, that's placing him as Lord, as the leader of everything. Regarding sense and nonsense with God's will, first, being active. Second, this idea of reactive. Ooh, reactive. Wouldn't ask for a show of hands of how many people are reactive sometimes. <laughs> reactive. It may ask the right thing, but in the wrong way. The right thing in the wrong way. It counteracts the potential because of our response. Again, father, child, uh, mother, child, uh, you know, this, this parent relationship. Uh, you come up and go, okay, fine, I'll ask. Um, can I have a cookie? I know what you're going to say, you know, and, and it's like, okay, the truth is you can have a cookie. You just can't have a cookie right now, but you're asking me this way, and that's really going to mess things up because I don't want to give you a cookie at all right now. God, I'm asking right now that you'll bless me with a spouse, that you'll bless me with a great job, and I know right now you're probably not going to give me anything because there's so many things that I'm lacking right now that I should be doing and I'm not doing, and you're probably not going to and the truth is, God may be going, no, I'm going to give you this, and I'm going to give these, but the way you're asking, oh, my word, I don't want to give you any, I just want to slap you upside the head, you know? We get reactive. It doesn't, doesn't go the way we want it to go. It doesn't play out. It doesn't, doesn't look. It goes beyond our senses. God, how could you be doing something that's beyond me? Did I say that out loud, Lord? Reactive. Well, James gives us some insight on this one too. James 4 3, he says, You ask and do not receive because you ask wrongly to spend it on your passions. That's a deep, that's a deep insight. You may be asking for the right thing, but with the wrong mindset. You may be asking, yeah, that that is a good thing to ask for, but you can't handle that right now. That would ruin 
what I have in store for you. If I give you that right now, I'll give you an example. You know, I stand here before you, I'm preaching. At about 17 years of age, I went to a camp. Uh, I'd been uh, raised in church, went to camp, really, really got close to God. That was where God got a hold of my life, and that was where I, the trajectory was getting ready to change. I was looking towards biology. I was looking towards uh, wildlife management, some kind of something in forestry. Uh, that was where I was wanting to head, and God was changing things in my spirit, in my heart, and I thought, I think I'm supposed to go into ministry. I think, I think I'm going to. And I remember having this discussion with, with leaders and people, influencers in my life, and they said, so you feel like you're going to be a pastor? <laughs> no way. I'll never, I'll never be a pastor. That would be crazy. No, no, no. I'm not talking like that. Like maybe, maybe like a youth pastor or something, but not a, and that's not saying the youth pastor is less than, it's just I'm dealing with youth and I'm not dealing with adults. Adults are crazy. I'm one of them. I know. Yeah. And I'm like, no, I could get my head around maybe youth ministry or helping in youth ministry, but not, not pulpit, not senior pastor. No, 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 that's not what God's saying. I can tell you this. Had God laid that one on me at that time, I would have run. I'd have run. I'd have said, no, I'm not, mm-mm. Because it was already enough stretch that I had in my mind I was going to be in some kind of conservation. I was going into biology. I was... That's what I had a scholarship for it. I mean, I was that was what I was going to do. And so it was a stretch to just go, okay, I'm not going to go to that school. I'm going to go to Bible school. I'm going to, I just, you know, going easy into this thing. God knew. Had I said, and I did, but had he answered the way I wanted him to answer, but I really didn't want him to answer that way, God, what is your will for my life? What's the end game here? Oh, well, you're going to be a senior pastor. You're going to be up in South Dakota. You know, that's up by Canada. And you're going to move your family from Florida to South Dakota at one point. And and my mind would have gone to, Lord, how did I get down to Florida? You know, right? That was a whole faith journey. And if he had laid all these steps, and here's the end game, and, and you're going to play out, I'd have gone, okay, kill me now. I just, Lord, that's overwhelming. That I can't. I can't do that because one of my greatest fears was speaking in public. One of my greatest fears was to get up and talk. I mean, I could tell a joke. I could, I could be the center of a party or whatever and then back off into the shadows and, and I'm good. But to do this, oh, this would have been overwhelmed. This would have rocked me. And I asked, God, what is your will? And it just seems like you're not answering. And God, just give, I can handle it, Lord. But the truth was I couldn't handle it. Church, I'm telling you, there's some things you can handle and there's some things you can't handle. There's some things you can handle now that you couldn't handle then. There's some things that you'll be able to handle that you can't handle right now. And that's God's grace and mercy operating in our lives. We can't be reactive. That messes up the potential. That messes up what God's wanting to do because all of a sudden the wrong attitude that makes perfect sense to us in the economy of the spiritual is nonsense. Jesus knew this. He thought this was important enough to include to his disciples and how you ask and how you seek and how you knock to find the Lord's will for your life. But this reactive, we've got to be careful. Our reaction to God's response is critical to moving forward and growing in our faith and receiving what he has for us. Matthew 7, 9 through 10, he goes further. He says, or which one of you If his son asks him for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he has if he asks for a fish, will give him a serpent? What he's doing, he's contrasting, like, why do you think because you ask that you're gonna get something you that's horrible that you don't want? Why do you think that you that God's gonna play this game with you? Listen, the Lord wants you to know his will. He wants you to know his will. So much so that he wants to come along with you to accomplish his will. His will so much greater than your strength or my strength could ever carry us. So much greater than our sense could ever understand. That's why we need him. We say we love miracles, but the thing about miracles is it puts you in miracle territory. And that really has no controls on us. That's all on God. But he invites us into that. 
And it's exciting on the other side of a miracle, but not through the miracle, right? We can't be reactive. We've got to be careful with this. In other words, God is not out to hurt you or give you something that will destroy you. Why would he allow bad things in our sense to happen to me or you or around me or around you? It, again, according to our sense, let me say this, life happens and with it consequences. Life sometimes is pretty brutal. Some of you have testimonies that you've, you've experienced loss beyond any loss according to our senses somebody should experience. You've experienced hurt in our sense beyond any hurt somebody should experience. And it's easy for us to jump over and go, why would God allow? Why would God do? The explanation, the information on that, the reason, the value may beyond, may be beyond what your sense can handle right now. It may be beyond what your sense, here it is, may ever handle. So that's where faith comes in and trusts God for who he is. For who he is. He doesn't change, church. He's not emotional one day and not emotional the next. That's us. He's not fearful one day and not fearful one day. He's unchanging. He's steady. He's trustworthy. And he loves you. Life happens with it consequences, and these consequences have decisions and actions. I get a front row seat oftentimes with people I, I, they don't know or can't understand why they're at where they're at, but if we go back to starting points, it makes perfect sense why they're at where they're at. Sometimes our decisions take us to a place, and that place is not where we desire to be, and we just don't understand it, but, but truly sometimes we can... But then sometimes we go, I, I can't trace how this just happened. This just landed on me. This storm just rose up. I had no idea. I had no control. Okay, listen, life happens, but God doesn't leave you. He doesn't forsake you. He's still there, and he'll get you through. Imagine life happening without him. Well, God, help us. Help us see that my active participation is needed in your will for my life, but I can't react in such a way that I'm guided by my own sense, but that, Lord, I'm guided by your spirit that you've placed within me. Thirdly, regarding sense and nonsense with God's will, there's first active, then there's reactive. Here's where I think we need to be is proactive. Proactive. Uh, it, it moves, it positions us towards his work, towards his plan, towards his ideas for our life, uh, that I position myself to, to be able to follow him, that I position myself that no obstacle would hold me back, that no reason would ever deter me from stepping into the footprints that Jesus has set forth. That's proactive. God, what I'm asking for, Lord, I just want to make sure that that if you fulfill this, if you come through, that God, I'm still in the center of your will, that I'm still able to bring glory and honor to you. God's not gonna call you somewhere. He's not gonna call you to something. He's not gonna call you to someone or to some conversation that dishonors him. It's not gonna happen. There's never gonna be a point that God's gonna call you, and I, I know the Bible says this, but I really believe God's telling me that it, it'll never happen. You got your ears open to the wrong frequency It'll never happen. Never. We have to position ourselves to be proactive in receiving what God has. Jesus knew this, and on the side of that mountain, he was, he was taking very specific time with his disciples to ensure that they understood this concept with him. It controls the potential within a response or our response when we're proactive with the Lord's will, Matthew 7 through 11, he says, if you then who are evil, and he's saying this to the crowd, you then who are evil, I mean, that's kind of a smack, right? <laughs> if you then who are evil in context, uh, for you then who aren't always spiritually minded, who are actually the opposite of spiritually minded, the opposite of what God is doing, for you who are evil or the opposite of our heavenly Father, know how to give good gifts to your children. I mean, in, in sense, if you, if you put this in context, you who aren't very smart know how to give good things. 
How much more, he says it, uh, how much more will your Father who is in heaven give good things to those who ask him? I mean, if we know, if we have the sense to do some good things with the lack of sense of eternal things, how much more will our heavenly Father know how to give good things? That's what he's saying to them. If you're on the side of that mountain, you're going, oh, makes sense. But church, I'm telling you, it doesn't just make sense. This is essential for following Jesus and for knowing the will of God for your life. To trust him, to allow him to work, not just as the sovereign God, but as Lord, a Lord who loves you, who is, has done everything anything and everything to make a way for your life. So if you're lacking direction, if you're lacking wisdom, if you're lacking something, if there's a distance between you and God in a relationship, what if you just presented yourself to him and you ask him for what you need? You know, I close with this. Maybe you have some decisions before you that you want God's will in. You have some decisions, but your idea, maybe your desires are possibly overshadowing his voice. You're so caught up in making sure you have the ear of God that you haven't opened your ear to God. I think we're all at risk of that sometimes. We get passionate about our ideas, and I'm not saying we have bad ideas, but I just want to make sure we have God ideas. That this, that this idea will ultimately provide for what God's wanting to do. Because I'm telling you, what God wants to do is often, most often, beyond our senses and our understanding. However, he brings us up to speed. But he doesn't do it in such a way that <laughs> it blows us away. It overwhelms us. As long as we stay close to him, he guides and he leads us in the moment. Again, I want to read that scripture, Matthew 7, 7 through 8. Jesus said he says, ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks, receives. And the one who seeks, finds. And to the one who knocks, it will be opened.